According to reports, recently China began to carry out the construction of naval reactor and land test due to the special characteristics of naval reactor, such as to use highly enriched uranium, hull space limitations on the volume and weight cannot be as huge as land reactor. The structure needs to be very compact, such as the A1B reactor core and the diameter of the reactor reduced to 4 meters. The length of the reactor is shortened to 5.5 meters. The weight is significantly reduced to 500 tons. At the same time, due to the existence of the aircraft carrier at sea tilt, transverse rocking, longitudinal rocking, undulation, transverse swing in other states, the reactor designed time to take into account these changes in the external environment, and some time ago there is a nuclear simulation of the island construction tender. As for this thing will be, where no all understand, don't understand on their own guess. This island without smoke exhaust canisters, the volume is very, very small, not only for nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, but also the island rear type of large aircraft carriers. For nuclear-powered aircraft carrier tonnage I have been saying 150,000 tons is more reasonable. But there are many people think that this tonnage is too large that nuclear-powered aircraft carriers cannot exceed 100,000 tons because the United States have not exceeded this tonnage. That the following on the United States of America's newest Ford nuclear-powered aircraft carrier as a basis for deducing the tonnage of the nuclear-powered aircraft carriers of the 004 is how much more reasonable. Speaking of tonnage then, we have to talk about the overall size. Then the future carrier will consider the first of two things as the catapult, now Fujian ship catapult size of 110 meters, Ford carrier electromagnetic catapult length of 115 meters, the hull length of 332 meters. But the future six generations of shipboard aircraft combat radius is farther away. The tonnage is larger, so the catapult needs to increase the length. Now 076 electromagnetic catapult are 130 meters. The future 004 nuclear-powered aircraft carrier as a basis to derive how much is reasonable. Then the future 004 electromagnetic catapult will not be lower than the size. In order to install 130 meters of catapults, then 004 hull size should be lengthened to more than 350 meters, that is, regardless of the size of the nuclear or conventional power. To use the 130 meter long electromagnetic catapults are not less than 350 meters. And determine the length of the ship another focus is the location of the island, is also the key to nuclear powered aircraft carriers. If this maintenance is not handled well, then the advantages of nuclear powered aircraft carriers cannot be played out. Not as convenient as conventional carriers more, carrier island position is usually located on the right side of the flight deck, the early use of propeller aircraft carriers. The pilot in the landing will instinctively turn sharply to the left in order to protect themselves. So the island placed on the right side of the island can avoid the pilot in an emergency hit the island. Modern people are accustomed to reading from left to right, so the open view on the starboard side helps pilots to concentrate. In addition, according to the International Maritime Collision Avoidance Rules, the ship should try to travel on the starboard side when traveling in narrow waterways which also makes the island on the starboard side of the ship to become a safe choice. The radar and communication equipment on the island of the ship need to be installed in a specific location. The supercarrier will be in accordance with the large phased array radar for deep space detection, the installation of the location of the more delicate. But now nuclear-powered carriers are all using small islands, mainly with the following advantages, the openness of the flight deck in order to ensure the safety of carrier aircraft landing and takeoff. The flight deck needs to be kept as open as possible. Therefore, modern aircraft carriers usually design the command tower, flight control room, navigation room, radar and communication antennae and other towering superstructures on the side of the flight deck, forming a structure similar to a small island, i.e., island, to reduce the impact on the flight deck. Concentration of electronic equipment. The top of the island is usually the centralized location for large electronic equipment on board including the gangplank for aviation personnel to observe deck operations, the command room for carrier deck dispatching, and the lounge for standby pilots and ground crew. This equipment needs to be compactly located on the island to improve space utilization. Impact of island location on carrier aircraft operations. Aircraft carrier island is set in the front, in the middle, the rear of the three ways. Conventional power carriers due to the influence of the exhaust channel are used in the middle way but the island is located in the middle of the carrier will be the flight deck, divided into two, resulting in the carrier aircraft landing triangle is cut off. The front and rear of the elevator is also cut off. This means that the aircraft on the rear elevator need to wait until the sloping deck landing operations clear in order to get around the island to the takeoff position, thus greatly reducing the utilization of the flight deck. Nuclear-powered carriers, on the other hand, 
don't have to be concerned about this and are more flexible in their mounting positions. The Ford class Carrier's Island is set back about 46 meters from the Nimitz class, which adds about 1,300 square meters to the forward parking area, based on a footprint of 250 square meters per F-180 fighter. Six more fighters can be parked. This approach results in a continuous parking area forward of the island, which effectively reduces the need for aircraft to bypass the island to the stern and improves the flexibility and efficiency of deck scheduling. In addition, the Ford class carriers also introduced the concept of one-stop protection area, set up 18 such protection area. Each protection area is equipped with refueling, power supply, and other protection resources so that the carrier aircraft can be in place to complete all the protection work without the need to transfer. This design draws on the safeguarding model used in Formula One racing, greatly simplifying the safeguarding process and improving operational efficiency. The maximum daily sorties for the Ford class carriers have increased significantly due to the reduced time spent on mobilization and switching safeguarding areas. For example, compared to the Nimitz class carriers, the Ford class carriers have increased their sortie efficiency by about 30 percent, allowing for more sorties per day. However, too much rearward positioning of the ship's island can also pose a problem. Placed in the rarmost position, the island can become a huge obstacle in the carrier's landing path, causing tremendous psychological stress for pilots and potentially creating uncontrollable deck winds that can interfere with maneuvering. This design is not conducive to safe landing, because pilots need to react quickly in stressful situations, and the position of the island will increase their psychological burden. As the island is positioned farther back, the turbulence affecting the landing aircraft is greater, so the island needs to be trimmed to minimize the effect of turbulence. This limits the usable area of the island to a certain extent. When the carrier aircraft needs to land within a short distance, the position of the island may make it difficult for the pilot to accurately judge the change of wind direction and speed during landing thus affecting the safety and accuracy of the landing. In addition, the starboard aft preparation area is small and usually prioritizes the parking of less frequently used aircraft to reduce the impact on deck scheduling. Therefore, although the aft position of the island of the forward class carriers improves the space utilization of the forward parking area, it also brings problems such as landing interference and reduced space utilization efficiency. And so the forward island from the stern line distance of about 50 meters but an actual use found to be too far behind the problem, following the location of the ship island to increase the island volume and adjust the location and the simulation of the island is the Ford type of small island. Then also need to move to the bow direction of the location of this minimum distance should be increased to 65 meters in order to maintain both the deck is large enough to maintain the space, but also will not affect the carrier aircraft landing too. So the integrated electromagnetic catapults and landing calculations down to 004 carriers to be 40 meters longer than the Ford is the minimum requirement, then 004 hull to Ford for the tonnage basis. Then the most conservative estimate at 350 meters maximum 370 meters, but the hull lengthening hull width and draft should be synchronized increase. So the aspect ratio of 7.8, square coefficient of 0.65, otherwise the carrier will have a huge impact on the stability of the carrier due to the Ford nuclear-powered carrier reactor protection requirements. Square coefficient is greater than the conventional carrier at least 5 points, that is to be a little bit of obesity, but it is not too much to the Ford for the mother of the type of 350 meters for 130,000 tons. 360 meters of 140,000 tons, the maximum of 370 meters for 150,000 tons. Many people think that nuclear-powered aircraft carriers cannot exceed 100,000 tons, the reason is that the U.S. aircraft carriers is 100,000 tons, but in fact the U.S. aircraft carriers are also increasing tonnage, such as the Ford I ship tonnage has been increased to 110,000 tons, and the third ship is likely to 120,000 tons of level of the U.S. infrastructure is allowed to the maximum tonnage, while the Ford hull for the mother type, an increase of 20 meters is 30,000 tons. 30 meters increase 40,000 tons, 40 meters 50,000 tons, 40 meters 50,000 tons. Last year when the country's nuclear-powered aircraft carrier is still only a legend, but from the industrial strength, China is fully equipped with the design and manufacture of surface ship reactor capabilities, only the lack of the corresponding engineering experience. These need time to grind fast, not in a hurry, at this stage, just to be able to see the top of the mast to 10 years to see the scene of the launching of the sea trial.